let's take a close look at one of the most wonderful vegetables that you can grow it is very easy except for that first year or two but once you get this plant established you are going to love it and so this is just a quick clip here from an earlier video about seven years ago when I started to grow asparagus so I'd like to show you how I've been growing it since then so I'll show you how we can plant this also some of the care that it will need and then a few of the problems you may experience how to harvest it and then ways we can use it in the kitchen so we basically can plant asparagus from either a crown or a seed a crown is basically a dormant um, asparagus root normally you can buy these at one year old or two year old roots you can also start these from seed. A great place to start if you're a new gardener is just to pick up this book available at many different bookstores and even the home improvement stores. And in here, it will give you a quick glance at how to get started growing asparagus. You will need to know your frost dates and I'll leave a link below the video so that you can find out your frost dates if you're not already familiar with it. The next thing you'll need to determine is the variety of asparagus you want to grow. One of the advantages to growing the Jersey varieties is that they are going to be resistant to a lot of the problems that you would otherwise experience growing some of the open pollinated heirloom varieties. Um, but we'll look at that closer here later in the video. So you'll basically just want to do some of your research. I've provided some for you here. If you'd like to pause the video and check them out, you're welcome to do so. And also many of the Jersey varieties are hybrids, but they've been developed mostly to produce male spears. So the male spears um, are usually prolific and they don't produce seeds. But you may want to produce seeds. So some of the open pollinated varieties might work for you as well, such as the Mary or Martha Washington. I originally started growing Mary Washington's two year crowns. So once you've selected the variety that will work in your zone, now we can begin to plant it. So some of you may be familiar with a garden author called Ruth Stout. She was um, pretty well known back in the 1950s and 60s for writing gardening books on ways to make gardening easy. So the asparagus plant actually inspired Ruth Stout to try to develop more easy ways for people to um, grow vegetables. I'll leave a link to a YouTube video up here in the corner uh, in a little card. If you like gardening, you might like to watch that little video. I think she passed away in the 1970s. However, back in 2011, the owners who had taken over her house and her yard uh, let me walk through her garden plot and I was amazed to see that the asparagus that she had planted back in the 1950s was still there and this I do believe is because it self sows easily so this is something you might want to keep in mind when you're ordering your crowns or you're planting from seed that um, asparagus does self sow and so this asparagus outlived her. <laughs> Normally though, the crowns um, will li live anywhere from 15 to 20 years, but if you let something um, re-sow, then you can continue to have it for probably who knows how long. So just keep that in mind. So there are a lot of gardening books out there that Ruth Stout wrote. She talks a lot about just no-dig potato planting, um, straw bale planting, mulch gardening. A lot of times when we hear about that today, we think of back to Eden gardening. But, um, you know, she was writing about this many years ago. So you can check out her books. They're on Amazon. And like I said, that little video, you may really enjoy it if you are a gardener. So once you've determined the time of year that you will need to plant your asparagus, either this by seed or by crowns, and usually this is in the very early spring, and you, then you've selected the variety that will work in your area, now you need to select an area in your yard. And asparagus does require full sun, but be uh, mindful of the plants that you may have around your asparagus only because when the fronds grow from the asparagus and you'll see how that works later in the video um, it gets very high sometimes anywhere from four to five feet and it can shade other plants around it you know this asparagus is going to be there a very long time so take your time when you're selecting your varieties and the location asparagus does very well in a raised bed because it requires a lot of drainage a very good well draining bed would be wonderful 
Now if you're starting from crowns, a lot of times you can just pick these up at the Home Improvement Store. Of course you can also order these online and you'll receive a lot of good planting information on your package. And so you can just follow those instructions. The instructions should tell you that you are going to need to soak your crowns for in some water for a little while before you plant them. So this is a picture of my asparagus bed. This is at a garden that I call the River Garden and I visit this a little bit in the spring so I can't really take advantage of my asparagus harvest much but mostly I'm here in the summer. So here's my bed in 2015. So on the left hand side of this bed you see I have some asparagus coming up and this was some that I transplanted from my garden in um, Florida when I lived there in 2008 and that was a two-year-old crown then. So right now today that asparagus crown is still producing wonderfully and I guess you could, it's probably 11 years old now. So I transplanted it um, when it was, let's see, it was probably around four years old when I transplanted it. So I had no issues. I actually transplanted it twice. So now I want to go ahead and start to fill this bed in a little bit more. So I started with some more crowns in April of 2015. And so what you want to do is make sure that your bed is well amended with organic matter. And I had a beautiful pile of wood chips that had been breaking down for two years. So not much longer after I planted the crowns, they were up and growing. Now let me show you how I planted them. And you want to just basically take your crown that you have been soaking in water and spread it out like a spider so that the roots are lateral. So I dug a hole that was about six inches deep, laid it flat in the hole, and then I covered it up with about three inches of soil. So not much longer, it was up and growing, and now I went back in and filled it in a little bit more. So you see just how quickly this grows and starts to take off in the spring. And that's all you want to do for the first year. Now I also wanted to fill the bed in with some seeds. So I ordered my seeds and the first thing you want to do is go ahead and soak your seeds in water for about 30 minutes. So I've shown my subscribers on a regular basis I like to use little cell packs with a good seed starting mix. Not a potting mix because I'm just starting seeds at this point. And now I just want to make a little holes in here. Now oddly enough asparagus is a cool seasoned vegetable but it does require heat to germinate. So here is a chart that you can look at that shows the optimum temperature for your seeds to germinate. So you want to have it around 75 degrees and since I was starting these indoors in the spring um, I wanted to make sure my soil stayed warm so I went ahead and used a little warming mat. So now my seeds have been soaking for about 30 minutes. I'll go ahead and put one per cell. Asparagus seeds can take quite a while to germinate so just be patient with them. And I just gently misted the top. I kept them misted. I did cover them up with a dome as well. And then several weeks later, they were up and growing. I noticed that one side was a little more strong than the other. And I do believe that's because it was warmer. That's where my heat mat was going in. And so those seemed to come up much easier. So now you can go ahead and transplant them when they get about 6 to 10 inches tall and you want to see a lot of stems coming out on the side. Now it's a lot harder to grow from seed only because they are much more fragile and they do require a lot of watering that first year. You have to baby your seeds a lot more than you would a crown. So don't expect for all of your seeds to come back the next year. It's very possible that only half of what you plant will come back unless you are very diligent about keeping them evenly watered. They don't like too much water. Like I said, your soil needs to be very well draining. So now let's talk about watering, feeding, and caring for your asparagus bed. Now here is an example of an asparagus bed by another YouTube gardener, um, Sarah the Gardener, and I highly recommend her channel if you would like to check it out. I'll leave a link below the video. Music 
Now her, she has two asparagus beds and you will notice that in the middle of the summer, and this happens to my bed as well, even though I grow mine in the ground, um, you can expect to have weeds take over the base of your asparagus beds. So make sure that you keep them weeded because they will compete for the nutrition that your asparagus is going to need. So keep um, the bottom of your asparagus beds um, clean and clear of weeds. And then later in the summer, your fronds are going to grow very tall. And this was my real mature um, crown here that you see. I didn't get to harvest much of the asparagus because, again, I don't live there. So I did need to stake it because it needs some support. A lot of times it could topple over and um, ruin your crown beneath the soil if it's top heavy or if a wind were to come. And this is an example of how Sarah stakes hers. And she did this, I think, right before a storm as well. So you may need to stake your asparagus. Now as far as watering, asparagus is very drought tolerant and can generally just live off rainfall. I, like I said, I don't even live at the River Garden. I don't think I've ever watered that asparagus. So um, there's a lot of morning that do right there by the river and it kind of keeps that bed moist. But if your plants are very new, make sure you stay on top of it that first year. Don't let them sit in water. It just needs to be evenly watered at least throughout that first year. So asparagus is one of those rare vegetables that you can grow that can actually tolerate more of a neutral pH. So um, for that reason, I tend to use some wood ashes in my asparagus bed, which will bring up the pH and it makes my um, bed slightly more alkaline. I don't recommend this for everyone. Um, it's just something that I do. I like to amend my bed with a little bit of peat, some wood ashes, and some compost. But I use some wood ashes in this bed, but I also use peat moss, so those kind of um, cancel each other out because peat is very acidic, but the wood ashes are very alkaline. So you want to make sure whenever you're preparing your bed before you plant um, to amend it uh, because you can't really do much of that afterwards. So late in the winter, before your spears begin to emerge, you are going to want to top dress your bed, preferably with something that's rich in organic matter like composted food scraps, hay, wood chips, straw, manure, grass clippings, or leaves. So I did find something interesting online. I'm not sure if it's been proven or not, but I did want to share it with you. So it's believe that sometimes a lot of these older roots on the crowns will decay and therefore they feed the root system of the asparagus. So really by top dressing it may not be beneficial but I do it because that's what I've read and other gardeners do it too. But I just wanted to let you know this is a very hardy perennial that does not require very much um, care after it gets established. So I mentioned earlier that some plants produce more male spears and some female spears. Uh, regardless if it's male or female, they will produce flowers that look like this. So some of these flowers, if they're female flowers, they will produce these little red berries. These are your seeds. And um, they are also poisonous. So do not eat these. You cannot eat asparagus berries. They will cause vomiting and diarrhea and you will know that that is not something you should be eating. And I um, have started to toss them back into my bed. I kind of like for this asparagus bed to outlive me too. And so I'm going to just go ahead and try to toss out just a few and then I remove the rest. Now at the end of the season, um, you can cut back your fronds. You will notice that they will turn yellow and then they'll brown and they'll die. Um, you can do that at the end of the fall when you're cleaning up your garden or you can let them overwinter. And this is believed to um, help catch some of snow if you live somewhere where it's very cold and it will help provide insulation for the asparagus. So um, at any rate, you will need to end up cutting back that dead growth. So now let's look at some of the problems you may experience. If you're growing hybrids, you probably are not going to have very many problems. But let's just take a look at some of the things that you might that a hybrid cannot protect you from. One of them is what's called a cut worm. And you'll notice if your asparagus spears or fronds have been just cut off at the base, you may have uh, cut worms in your soil. So you can um, look for those or you may just see them on top. 
and they usually appear kind of curled up like a big C. I also read that wood ashes, if you put those just at the base of plants, those can keep the um, cutworms away. Now one thing that I think a lot of new gardeners struggle with is trying to determine whether a bug is a good bug or a bad bug. We always hear about the good bugs and the bad bugs. And so what I'd like to do here is just show you some pictures of bugs you should not see on your asparagus plants. Um, first I want to give you here a list of different ways you can control insects in your garden. These are a little bit less toxic um, and you just have to pick one according to your gardening practices. So first I'll start with asparagus beetle damage. If you notice that your fronds have been stripped and they look bare like this. Upon closer investigation, you may see the spotted asparagus beetle. It'll look a little bit like a ladybug, but it's much more elongated. Or you may see the black asparagus beetle. Either one of these um, feed on those fronds and they also lay their eggs on the fronds. And this is what they will look like. That's what their eggs look like. So one of the surprising things I read about asparagus is that it's deer resistant. So deers don't prefer it. Perhaps it's because of those red berries that are on the fronds in the fall. I have read though that they may nibble on those new spears that emerge in the spring. Another issue that you may find with asparagus, especially the heirloom varieties, is something called rust. So if you see lesions on your spears, um, this can be a problem. The lesions will change colors throughout the growing season. So in the spring, they'll be more of an orange color, and then they will graduate to a red, and then at the end of the season, they will be black. So this can be controlled uh, in various different ways, but I think the first thing to know is just how to identify it. So with this help here, you can go to the internet and figure out um, whether you want to use a fungicide or whether you'd like to use something that's a little bit more um, manual, like chopping down your spears in the early spring and um, skipping a harvest. So there are different ways to control that. So now let's look at how we can harvest the asparagus. So if you planted it from seed and hopefully your planted asparagus will come back that first year because like I said, it can be kind of tricky when you're planting from seed. It's a lot less expensive, but you are going to have to wait three years to start to harvest that uh, asparagus. Now you might can pick a few that the second year. So this harvest that you saw at the beginning of the video, um, I actually um, bought two year crowns for that bed and I mentioned that earlier but so this was the third year and you can see how well the asparagus was growing so if you planted a one year crown the second year you can take a few spears and then the third year you can go ahead and just start to harvest it so if you plant a two year crown your first year of growth you can go ahead and harvest that and that's what I did and that uh, crown did fine Initially, you'll probably just start to harvest your um, asparagus for about two to three weeks, but as those crowns become more established, you will have hopefully an eight week period of time where you can just go out and has harvest a little bit of asparagus every day. You do not want to harvest any of the spears which are thinner than a pencil. Just go ahead and leave those. Those will help nourish the crown for energy for growth for the next spring. So when I harvest my asparagus, I like to just put it in a little jar of water and you can actually put this in your refrigerator if you want to. Um, I try to cook it immediately because there is nothing better than fresh asparagus from your garden right when you pick it. Just go inside and go ahead and start cooking it up. You know, it's kind of like a homegrown tomato or something. Just a completely different flavor than buying it at the store. So now let's take a look at how you can use it in your kitchen. Of course, this is always the fun part. And if you've ever seen white asparagus, this is not a particular variety that um, you can grow. You have to use a special technique called blanching the asparagus so that you can have white asparagus. I've not done this before, but all you need to do is before those spears start to um, emerge in the spring, just cover up the crown so that it blocks sunlight from the spears. And apparently you'll have white 
asparagus. Won't that be neat? So regardless of how you prepare your asparagus, you'll want to just snap off the base. The base is pretty woody. Just snap it off where there's not much resistance. And then here's just a real easy way to cook it. Um, just give it a quick wash and then you'll want to just pat it dry. Make sure it's nice and dry. And I'm just going to cook a little serving for myself in the toaster oven. So you'll just want to drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil. Make sure you coat it pretty well and we'll put some salt on it. And then you can just broil it for about five minutes in your oven and it'll just have a wonderful flavor. Very, very simple. And another easy, gentle way to cook asparagus is to just blanch it in water. So for instance, if I want to put it in a salad or something, I don't really prefer the texture or flavor of raw asparagus. So I can just drop it in some boiling water for about one minute until it's nice and bright green. And then I'll drop it in some ice water to stop that cooking process. And it is just perfect for pasta salads or in this example, I used it for a um, seafood salad in the spring. I had all these beautiful spring herbs like dill and some fresh lettuce and spinach and just all kind of wonderful things. I had my watercress and it made just a wonderful salad. And then I'll also use it with a lot of other vegetables that I might have coming out of my garden. And so if I cook them in a liquid, I like to cook them for about two minutes. And in this example, I just had some fish with some artichokes, some cannellini beans, and some carrots and little chicken stock. It was really nice. Now, sometimes I like to take my favorite part, which are the tips, and I'll just take those off and I'll use the rest of the spears and something else. I don't throw those away. Those are wonderful too. And then I can just add the tips to maybe a coconut milk soup with some mushrooms and sweet potato. Really, really good there. And then another dish that I made with the asparagus tips was a creamy balsamic vinegar mushroom pasta. It was really good. Very good. I highly recommend it. And then always just picking some fresh ingredients from the garden like spinach and chives are just so good with an omelet, especially early in the spring. Add a few mushrooms and you've got yourself a wonderful omelet that you can enjoy right there in your garden. So when you're growing your asparagus and you're looking for a way to use it, feel free to head on over to my channel. We're over there. If you click on the playlist, it'll take you on over to asparagus recipes, and I'll be adding a lot more to it this year. So I hope you can give some of those a try, and I hope that you are able to be successful growing this wonderful vegetable. Also, if you haven't already, please make sure that you click that bell off to the right of the subscribe button and then click that box and you'll receive notifications from my channel. As always, please feel free to drop down there and share this video on your favorite social media platform. I sure would appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and y'all have a beautiful day.